Welcome. Inside the, Avatar, inside the Avatar Studio brings together innovative leaders from the virtual technology frontier to discuss their perceptions, perspectives, and predictions of what being virtual means in today's society. I'm your host, Dirk McKeenan. With me today is the wonderful Lauren Whalen. Lauren is an in-world stand-up purveyor of insight into Second Life culture. Lauren's show can be caught every Tuesday at 5 p.m. at Cookie Island. Lauren is also the producer author, and actor of In the Pink, a play written by women in SL about what does woman mean. The show emanated from the vagina monologues and was a fundraiser for vday.org. That's v-day.org. She's also performed for Act Up in several plays, including Midsummer Night's Dream and I Gave It the Office, written by Laulu Loon. Lauren, thank you for being on the program. Well, thank you. Uh, it's great to realize that some of that stuff is, uh, I think, from the 18th century. Wow. That was back when we came into Second Life using, uh, uh, you know, the wireless uh, well, the we, telephone we try telegraph. Not to be, uh, we try not to be too current because we, we can let you upstage us that way. So, first, I understand that uh, you were born uh, a number of years ago. You want to tell us about how you came into this world? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I was uh, wandering around and I saw that, uh, you know, it's interesting, I saw Sony was coming in here, and Sony is now about to leave First Life forever, slowly but surely, they only make films, but anyhow, I saw them coming in, I said, that's interesting, I should see what that's all about, and I came into Second Life, and uh, you could either go left or right, and I went left, and uh, Lauren Whalen was born. And um, how how'd you get started? I mean, what uh, what's the first thing you remember doing in Second Life? A uh, sex. Uh, I think that's just about what everybody does, except for like two or three people who say they skated before they had sex. But uh, ah, yeah. And and did you find it totally fulfilling? Uh, yeah, that's why I went into comedy because it was so fulfilling. I didn't have to do it anymore. It was unbelievable. But uh, do you remember all that? Does anybody remember that? Way back when, mm. when there was sex in Second Life, when there was gambling, when there I've, was... I've heard uh, of it, I've heard of it. But, yeah. Um, hmm, yeah. And um, now, as far as um, any sort of early entertainment, what do you remember um, when you first came in? Is, was there anything that gave you an idea um, that entertainment is a good thing to bring to this platform, or how did that go? Well, actually, sitting in the room right here is the person who began this whole thing. Think or a, a Selby, Evans, and all the rest of it used to just be Think. But uh, he wanted to do something that had to do with improv, and Gio was in the room, too. Gio was a part of it, and Think got us set up in something called TeamSpeak. Does anybody remember TeamSpeak? That was before there was Voice in Second Life, when being a girl was a little bit easier, Right. Hey, Jilly, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> Shanna, you remember that? Yeah, so uh, Think wanted to do something which improvisational comedy. And so he asked a bunch of people to join in TeamSpeak to talk it over or whatever. But we were in Second Life in our avatars. And uh, actually, it was Think, uh, Gio and I, and we were chatting about uh, comedy. And all of a sudden, I noticed it went quiet. You ever notice that, girls? Guys can't do two things at the same time, right? Yeah. So I knew right away what that. they were doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I said, guys, you're camming up my skirt, aren't you? <laughs> and sure enough, they were. They caught him in the act. And I said, if they're going to do that with this voice, comedy is born. There you go. And, and at that point of time, uh, how would you compare to how you look then to the ravishing beauty that you are today? Like Christina Aguilera, I've had work done. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Um, have you always been a blonde? Yes, always been a blonde, uh, although I get better dye jobs now. The hair is a lot better. I, in the old days, gosh, oh, I remember the first hair. It didn't move. We were so excited when flexi hair came. 
And mm. and you guys, you never knew anything about that. You just wandered around wearing crappy shoes. You didn't know where we were. You could have found all of us. All you had to do was go over to ETD. That's where we used to hang out. I, I believe I still have my uh, original music musician's uh, black shirt available. <laughs> I think that I think that came with some matching hair. <laughs> So, I used to enjoy uh, when you guys used to come in world after you crashed and you'd come in looking like Ruth Goldstein. And uh, I thought that was quite something. <laughs> yeah, being a Ruth is, is always fun. Um, do you have a favorite Ruth moment? Uh, yeah, yeah. One, now, for those of you who are out there in First Life that are watching this and not sure that much about all of this, and you see a little bit of the virtual world in us. But it back being Ruth is that there was an original singular character. And you'd come in that way if you crashed until you rezzed into whatever it was that you were as an avatar. And I remember this one guy who was absolutely belligerent, griefer, pain in the butt, everything. And he came to shows and would cause problems. You all remember griefers. And he crashed to come back. And he came in as Ruth. And as he landed right in front of me with all that bravado, he was at Ruth. And I could only laugh. And I laughed and laughed and laughed <laughs> until we finally left. <laughs> uh, the days of griefers. Um, and, and have you ever Ruthed yourself? Or do you talk about that? Because that would be a very shocking thing. Uh, and there are times when I wake up in Second Life, but I'm alone and I'm Ruthed. But, you know, mm. then I just uh, rebake. Ah, well, yeah. Um, and so you started off with um, getting into the comedy then. Where did, it, uh, where did it go from there? I got to take one look at one thing. Bevan is saying that she's getting double sound. So I don't know if we're giving her double sound or whether uh, it's something else. Uh, is everybody else hearing this okay or not? Uh, just be sure because if you're not, I'll, I'll... good. All right, single sound. All right, Bevan, it's you. Wait, wait, what were you asking, Dirk? I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Um, so you started off, you, you finally figured out that, uh, that all the guys uh, were enjoying looking up your skirt, so it was a yeah. great place for comedy. Um, and uh, so at that point in time, um, you were, were you uh, doing work with other people, or were you starting to set up? Did you, when did you come up with an idea of having your own, uh, having your own venue? Well, what, what occurred was at that point, point us laughing, and, and it was really Think who said, well, you can do this, you know. And I said, no, come on, this isn't going to work. And Think said, absolutely. He said, remember, Mickey Mouse is a male falsetto voice, and nobody thinks of Mickey Mouse as anything but. And then Geo, Geo went out, oh, plodding through The Sims, trying to get me work. It was incredible. And they hooked me up with somebody uh, called Jane Zohaying, who worked with me writing the first scripts because remember we were doing this in stream not in live voice as a matter of fact i did the first show ever in voice uh second life voice uh and uh, invited philip Lendon, but uh, he was nervous but no but anyhow so <laughs> so so we set Go up figure. that show and i learned how to do this okay this i learned from jane took three hours to learn how to do this okay ready mm-hmm <sighs> Men. Okay? So I can do that. Uh, if you didn't hear that, I'll do it one more time. Did everybody hear that? Oh, oh please do. Please do. Ah. <sighs> Men. Okay? So. <laughs> priceless. <laughs> hey, Astra. Right. Priceless. Exactly. So that was it. And we got the first show uh, out. And uh, and really, without Geo and Think, there wouldn't be a show. And, and uh, the show on Tuesdays started out on Thursdays. But, you know, the problem in Second Life is anything that's doing well, somebody wants to do something on the same day as what you're doing. So I just kept moving my show around till I found a day that people couldn't find on the schedule, Tuesdays. And so it moved to Tuesdays. And Dirk, oh, I, know that, yeah. I know you've been to the show. And you, you know, yeah. Yeah, in my neighborhood, uh, people tend to go to the bars in real life at night on Tuesdays, but then I have to work on Wednesdays, so I'd much prefer listening to you. Ah, uh, you know what I did do, which was an awful lot of fun, talking about bars and stuff. Zimu actually broadcast, and this is a few years ago, broadcast a show into a movie theater in Amsterdam live 
from Second Life, and he had the thing going with different uh, performers, and I got to do uh, an hour, and, uh, you know, oh, and I, I, I don't want to give an outrageous plug, but Chantel's not here, but she's doing the, uh, this weekend, keep an eye on this, this is very important, I'll tell everybody about this, the Machinima Contest is coming up, and what made me think about that is Pookie's here, she's one of the great Machinima uh, artists of Second Life that I've worked with, and I'll, I'm going to give out a lot of plugs during the show, but go ahead. I think that I think that works nicely. Um, okay, so um, so when did you start? All right, now so now you've gotten into the point where you feel comfortable doing, or at least marginally comfortable, since you asked Philip to be there, uh, doing comedy in Second Life. When did you start getting involved in benefits? And you know, mention some of them. Oh well, the benefits came about because I guess. Uh, I was able to get a draw because of all of you that are out there right now. You guys made everything happen. There wouldn't be any show or anything without everybody who's sitting out in the audience. And I uh, started doing the benefits. And what was really great was that, you know, Second Life has truly affected many people in First Life. Uh, of course, everyone knows Relay for Life. And, of course, we all do that. And actually, this year, for a big deal, crap is doing it. And uh, and actually, it's gotten a bunch of us. We've all guaranteed a certain amount of money if you go and find us in somewhere or other. Crap can put it in there. So that's one a whole bunch of us have joined in on. But over the years, did Coats for Children, did uh, – uh, uh, Well, Second Life Play- Aids, I think it was. Was the, was the Playboy performance a benefit? I think it is. I think it's always a benefit for those guys that were there. I did the play. Hmm. Do you remember the Playboy Club in Second Life? Does anybody remember that? That was fantastic. What a what? A, how funny was that? That's where I met Ava hmm. Moon. <laughs> oh my! Yeah. So, so uh, I remember. Yeah. I, I I remember seeing something about uh, you were, in, for instance, involved in Second Life AIDS and Coats for Kids, Pride Week, um, as you mentioned, Relay for Life, um, Freedom Fest, Tibet Fund, Project Children. Uh, you've been a little busy, haven't you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it was interesting. The Coats for Kids was amazing because it was a one-hour show, and it was back when people would really had money before, uh, I guess, before George Bush lost it all. Because mm. I, I remember I did a one-hour benefit and raised 1200 U.S. dollars for Coats for Kids in one hour, which was really off the rocket ship. And That's I, awesome. Yeah. And, <clears throat> Anyhow, and then uh, yeah, you, and then there was um, I think some of the other ones. Uh, Braz for the cause. I've, I'm, do you know Braz, what that is? That does, Braz. Braz. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, so B- is B-R-A-Z Braz. is where I saw it. But, uh, Braz. Okay, there you go. Well, well, thinking <laughs> about that, um, considering how successful you've been um, in your second life career, your rather awesome second life career, um, what kind? What brought you the idea of the the role reversal about? How you approach your how do you approach your persona in Second Life? What what are you talking about? Um, I, I every so often I've heard that you've like talked you talk like about a my man. Handler? You talk about mm-hmm. my hand. Oh, that 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 guy is such a pain. I mean, all mm. the guy does is watch me walk. Is always looking at my ass. I can't believe it. I don't know why he does what he does, but I can't explain that. But. Uh, <laughs> that has nothing to do with Second Life. That just has to do with some weird guy wandering around. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, that, that had me worried. Yeah, that had yeah. me a little worried. Um, just out of curiosity, since we're talking mainly about Second Life, and uh, since all the other uh, virtual worlds are starting to come into their kind of existence, have you uh, explored any other worlds besides Second Life? Any other yeah, metaverse I've platforms? I've performed on some of them. Uh, I've performed on several of them. Unfortunately, there's nobody there, so uh, I'm just performing for myself, which is kind of fun. You know, you just go over there. I don't know what you do in these other worlds. They've come, they've gone. Uh, I could mention names, but then they might not be here. You know, they're 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 a lot like blackberries. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and and blackberries have gotten really wonderful, considering the smart versions of them are dying left and right. Um, <laughs> So uh, okay, then there was then there were corporate events. Um, how did you approach corporate events different than say the fundraisers? Like the, I mean, there was the Intel Second Fest, the Metastock Festival. Here's where we talk about the Playboy Party because that was a corporate event, I guess. Yeah, and um, that was a while back, so, and that was really kind of interesting. Those characters, in order to do that show, 
they had to do an entire research and and nobody else have had to do this but the playboy people had to do research get signed off on stuff they took they did all their own publicity they did it no wonder they're broke you know they could have just <laughs> been there and had some fun you know but uh, but yeah the corporate events i haven't done those in a long time mainly it's the tuesday show at five that we do now uh mm -hmm. Comedy, people don't really want to pay for comedy. I don't know why. You know, they, they like to pay for mm -hmm. music, but I don't know about the rest of it. And we, and we, by the way, so you know, on Tuesdays now, we have five, six different comedians come in. Pookie's come in and done some work that's just had people in stitches the last oh, time. Oh, she was awesome, wasn't she? Yeah, unbelievable. And uh, but she's done this professionally before, but it's just so much fun when she comes in uh, to the Tuesday with Lauren uh, in the audience. Bubble Pop, who's been doing some great stuff. We have new people come in and, and then make something out of it, like Veritas, who's become like Elvis. And then we have Tara Lynn, who is actually uh, uh, going to be the host or hostess next Tuesday because I have to go on a business trip in First Life and make some money. But uh, but yeah, so it, it, it there comedy is very very alive in Second Life. Unfortunately, it's alive really only in Cookie. <laughs> hmm. Well, all right. So just for kicks, why don't you take us through uh, a regular evening? Because I'm I'm as I recall, uh, you're not up there all the time. Although while you're up there, you're wonderful and stunning. But um, have you have you started many careers? Uh, yeah, uh, I've started a few people on uh, getting in touch with their uh, other self, which uh, has led to uh, great degrees of schizophrenia. So I think I've helped a few psychologists and psychiatrists in First Life, you know. And, Always uh, wonderful. Drug companies. And uh, I do find interesting in Second Life. Second Life is a hoot, and you all know it out there, right? I mean, a bunch of you have been partnered. Now, now you got to admit, right, Dirk? Have you ever been partnered? Do you have a partner? Actually, no, I don't. All right, girls. One who's never been partnered. We have a virgin in the first row here. But uh, mm -hmm. don't you think the people that have been partnered, you know that little, where they get the little pull down that tells you I've been partnered, the per person's name? I think that we should ask them in Linden Labs. That should be a pull down with everybody you've ever partnered, and the person could be rated. You know, that way, you know, or how many times they've been partnered. It could be little stars for the number of times they've been partnered. Wouldn't that be great? Wow. Mm, I, I, I can see that might become a little bit of a uh, detriment to some people's view of being partnered. Yeah, there are a few people in here. I, I, there are some guys here that um, have put more notches there than they've put in trees. Anyhow, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> <I'm> exactly Phelan. <laughs> But I, I, I think Second Life is just a hoot. I mean, look at around the room. Oh, here. absolutely. Because I want you to know, just like your mother's told you, you know that if you sat cross-eyed long enough, this is going to be happen to you for the rest of your life. You've been in Second Life long enough. This is your eternity. What you'll look like. These are your names. Oh, and Catboy's here too. Catboy just. Catboy just did a show first time for us. We all laughed like crazy just last Tuesday. So there's somebody who just showed up just, just a couple of days ago and began her routine. There you go. Okay, so you get up on stage. You, you open it up. How long do your shows run? They run an hour, and then we have music afterwards. And uh, Jay Wheels, uh, Jamie Jordan, books the music afterwards. So it runs about two hours. It's it's the only show that I know in Second Life where everybody is just turns on voice, says what they want to say. It's a live happening. You know, we're sitting in a club having fun uh, time. You know. You know, because mm -hmm. which is kind of fun because I, I know that a lot of people go to other things and they're there, but they are watching TV or doing something else, but not not at our show because mm -hmm. we know if you're watching TV or something because that's or washing that's dishes or exactly yeah, and it's it's always fun at your shows because people just chime in and um, you are rarely ever um, stumped. Yeah, I'm not quiet. Except for Eshi, who just came in. Look at that. Hey, guys, look at that. Eshi is here. Now, Eshi uh, also did a lot uh, with clothing and stuff. So we have so many creative people in this room. It's absolutely mm -hmm. amazing that First Life is even working right now. Indeed. <laughs> well, I looked out the window and all the traffic stopped, so uh, it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. 
So, all right. So you do you do a little bit. You get some. Do you, is there anything that you look for in the people that you uh, you bring into your platform? I mean, do you bring people? You you look for a mix of say people that have no exposure and then mix it with uh, people with lots of exposure. No, I think Haley actually said this, which is, and, and a couple of other people said, it, if you come and you want to give it a shot, we, we put you on there. And if you, if you just give people a feel that they, they can do it, often the first time, like for anybody, they're not good the first time. The second time, they're better. By the third time, they're very good. So we've had a lot of people grow in. We've had a few people who were good right away. But I don't think you should judge in, in the comedy. I mean, this is really not American Idol, okay? Oh, absolutely. Uh, right. And, uh, and if we're going to talk about the voice, this is the voice that you hear right now. This is the winner of the voice. Except, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I always love in Second Life, you know, because I get hit on from time to time. They, look at my legs, Dirk. They're nice, right? Ooh, I just have they, done everything. Oh, yeah. And, and I'll tell you, sometimes when you wear the, ter- when you wear the certain kind of torn stockings, um, mm. It, mm, <laughs> yeah. Um, what is it so, liking us in torn stockings? It's like we've just been, unfortunately, uh, something has happened to us. And are you rescuing us or you just figure somebody else has torn the wrapper off? What is that? Oh, I, I always figured it was that you had an itchy leg. And um, <laughs> yes. So um, have you um, let's see? How, so how long have you been doing the show? Well, the show started, we, we started in 2007. We actually, the first show was done, uh, I don't know if it was late May or early June of 2007. So we will be going into our, I don't know, is it the fifth or sixth season that you call it if we go in after that? If it's seven, what is that? The, it's well, the, it's, you know, it's, at least, it's at least five, which is a serious uh, well, accomplishment. Right. The only person that has done more in shows longer is sitting in here as Pookie, who has actually been doing a show in Second Life before they even invented Second Life, okay? <laughs> well, so, yeah. Pookie is awesome, and, uh, and we definitely know that. So, and when you got started on your first show, let's say um, after you, you, you get the show going, you do your first season, um, how did you think it went? How, how long did you think it would hold up for? Well, first of all, I was so scared. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't breathe. And as a matter of, a matter of fact, that goes on for a number of years. And I still spend an hour before, even here, as you know, I was here before. I, I, I will tell you, there are many times I thought the show would not be. You saw me earlier. I wanted to see if anybody was going to come. And, mm-hmm. and actually, about, I don't know, six months or eight months ago, the draw had dropped down to maybe 12 to 17 people were showing up and it was getting a little down. I was, a, I was feeling like, wow, I'm not sure, whatever. And fortunately, my friends, and there are a bunch of people that are there all the time, they come early, like Haley comes early, White Queen comes early, a lot of people come early and they were chatting. And I don't know what happened, but something occurred. We're getting 85 to 90 people in the course of two hours. They're not all there for two hours, but we're now getting 85 to 90 people on, uh, on just about every Tuesday. Awesome. And, uh, so, you know, it, I think it's because, uh, and I learned this, but you'll leave it enough from Pookie, because of first question, which used to be second question, but then it became so popular, it became first question. But uh, by having guests... Inflation. Exactly. They they brought friends and stuff like that. So by people mm. beginning to, to open up, to I think that's what happened. Because I don't think I'm that popular. Mm, I don't know. You, I hear lots about you. Um, mm. So after so even even recently, as as popular as you are, you've still kind of still just wondering. But you know, we we don't wonder. We know you're good. Um. You know, it's funny you say that. You know, I got to tell you something funny. And I'm sure it's happened to a bunch of you that do stuff. But it is really amazing in, in, a, in a way. I was out shopping once. Well, more than once. But once in particular, the first time shopping. And, uh, and I don't know if it was in voice or in chat or whatever. But there were two people in the room somewhere further down. And one said to the other one, oh, 
it's Lauren Whalen. You know, it was like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a moment. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and hey. Eat your heart out of hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's the question nobody's supposed to ask. Um, yeah. How old do you claim to be? Oh, I know exactly how old I am. Uh, I started out, well, you, you know, before I existed, there was somebody called, a guy called Jack Benny. Do you remember that? And he I got stuck at an age, which was 39. So I've stuck myself at exactly 29. So I have never been able to budge off that number. I'm 29 forever. And, and I have friends. I mean, Haley's 17. Crap is three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as she fluctuates <laughs> as she is as she yeah. she chooses she chooses the base that the number will be calculated in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay so um i'm curious about i i will admit i have not seen in the pink um you want to talk so- about that for a sec but that hasn't been done for years. I'm surprised that that uh, came up. But I will tell you how proud I am of that show. That mm-hmm. show was done in 2008, I believe, if somebody corrects me. I was started out in 2007 in conversation. And uh, it was going to be done with the doing the vagina monologues. And, of course, uh, I, I ended up, I was very fortunate. The women involved asked if I'd be producer. And as a producer, uh, there was a, a, a restriction that I could not attend the uh, rehearsals or the, you know, uh, writing of any part, part of it because of uh, the rules involved with the uh, vagina monologues. Does everybody know what the vagina monologues are? Now, guys, don't tell me you th- you know if you don't know, okay? Good, Astra. That's good. Okay. Uh, yep. Yep. There you go. Eve Ensler. Right. Very good. That's great, Dusa. Thanks. So, uh, March 8th. Exactly. Look at that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, anyhow, we got to the point when uh, we, we had uh, Tori Lynn, myself, Ada Radius, and... Uh, Calliope, and I forget Calliope's last name, the four of us were in product, producing it. Calliope was really doing the directing. Uh, Ada was doing the bookkeeping. Tori and I were doing publicity and everything else. When we learned, and this is something that a lot of people have occur in Second Life, we were told we wouldn't be able to do it because Second Life is not, uh, it doesn't have a geo uh, boundary. Well, it has a geo that's bounded, but not a ge- geographical boundary. And therefore, our legal rights to do it were very mixed because they were owned by different people in different countries. And so we were told, we're sorry, you're going to have to shut that down. And, hmm. uh, but Calliope had been working with uh, some 17 women uh, and the writers, and that's also out on Cookie, and, and, Ad- and Adele is part of all of that, who's here. Uh, they... We, we came up with a concept that we had enough women here in Second Life that could write their own stories, that we could get 17 stories. And believe it or not, not only did we get 17 stories, uh, Calliope even got me to write a story, and I actually got to perform in it, which was pretty incredible. But Awesome. Uh, the, the, it, w- it was a spectacular production. It was the first production in Second Life. And with all the lag and breakdowns and stuff, we managed to have it set up that we, we got through the shows. Uh, it was so successful that actually it got performed in New York. Six of the pieces were performed in New York by Donna Mitchell. Oh, who's the gal that was in... Um, oh, I can't remember now. Uh, Gil- Gilligan's Island. Who was the cute little girl in Gilligan's Island? You remember who she was? Yeah. Uh, not, not Diane Keaton. No. Diane Keaton. Not, <laughs> Do you mean yeah. Marianne or Ginger? Marianne, but who was it? Oh, who was the? But who was the the actress? I, all I remember is she was after the professor and before Ginger. And Lou Lou, Lou Ann DeLaSeps, who is uh, on Cowswives of New York, 
and a variety of other people did it uh, in New York. So, yeah, I didn't mean to take that long on it, but I'm, I'm really incredible. If you, it's too bad that didn't get recorded and out there because, without a doubt, it was one of the great productions of Second Life, and it really showed the creative talent in the writing, the people who wrote it, the people who performed it. Lelu did the reading at the beginning from Eventsless, a piece that we were allowed to use about New Orleans. Everybody forgot New Orleans, Katrina, and all that. And uh, it was pretty spectacular. And I won't say more, but I was really amazed by it. Well, it figures that Phelan has come up with her name, Don Wells. I recognize that now that, uh, now that he's typed it. Uh, somebody else, then that's not can't be. Uh, <laughs> Oops. It's island. Let's try that. Because I'll know her name as soon as you say it. Hmm. But that besides the point. I think it begins yeah. with an E first name. Hmm. But he comes up with it. Okay. So um, okay, so that was a success back then. Have you thought of uh, Have you thought of trying to do it again? Uh, no, uh, we've never been able to put it together. And fortunately, here in Second Life, the Avatar Repertory Company, that's also does stuff on um, on uh, Cookie. A lot of those people came out of the the other productions and have created an incredible group. That uh, every Friday they they do some. Uh, uh, sort of production and testing out things, and then they do uh, shows from time to time. And they've done phenomenal jobs in uh, Alice in Wonderland and and what have you. So uh, Tina Louise, that's it. Tina Louise. Thank uh, Ginger. Uh, Ginger. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. But uh, but uh, yeah. So a lot of things came out of things that I got a chance to work on early, and uh, and of course uh, I don't know what's What's in there? I've done a bunch of machinimas with Chantel, with uh, uh, um, a couple of other production companies, and I've also worked with uh, Lauren Tone, and we did uh, with Eric Whitlock, Whitaker, and the rest. Uh, what was it? Uh, Godzilla Eight Las Vegas. Oh so, my! Yeah, but I'll tell you something. For those of you out there that have not ever seen a a Pookie production. I would look for Pookie Media and take a look at some of her work. It has been stunning work and a lot of fun. She's worked hard on her stuff. Absolutely. Uh, to do some voiceover stuff and been invited to for a couple of things. Well, I'm curious. You mentioned uh you mentioned Lalu a couple of times. Um she wrote uh oh what was it the um I gave it the office. Um mm-hmm. Yeah. I had a sex scene in there with uh, oh, oh do tell. And no, I'm not going to tell. I won't say his name. I'll let you all figure that out. We had I, phones. We were we were phone. It was phone sex. <laughs> oh my! It was just funny, <laughs> but it was really and and uh, a lot of people in this room have helped make a lot of these things happen. You know, um, with, without all of you. Oh, let's see back there. A friend of mine back there, Xanthi, I see she's here. She does a lot of dance performances, too. Just about everybody. I, that's what's amazing about Second Life is that people find their voice. What you see up here, this is me. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> my handler, one day I'll kill him and I'll just be me, okay? No, well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, what did you play in there? Uh, I... I I, I, I played somebody who was waiting around in the back frustrated through most of it. No, I can't. I, 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 I don't even know what my part was anymore. No, I had a small oh. part. And it was really fun. No, I'm joke, joking, joking. Uh, it was a, 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 actually the production value of that was amazing in terms of record or show, what she built, and the people that were involved with the, uh, the whole show. It, it, it was another stunning performance and a unique performance in Second Life that led to creativity in sets and how to res sets in shows. And uh, it, it was, uh, it, you know, I, I, I fortunately, you know, I, sometimes my job was to either be the drama queen or to make other people that were having arguments be nice to each other. So I had both at various times. Oh, I could be drama eager. queen? I can't imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, now, I understand one of your, you've mentioned Pookie a number of times, and I understand a, a, a highlight, uh, one of the highlights of your life, uh, that you were a winner on First Question. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, that was, that was funny. That was my second time. My first time, I didn't know the tricks of the trade, okay? Mm-hmm. I don't know how to Google stuff and do all that. So the second time I was on, I had a, a little bit of a concept, and I was in last place. And, uh, and actually, Phelan Fairchild was on with me, and there were two guys who were absolutely doing that whole guy I'm going to win thing. You know what I'm talking about, girls? You know, when it's just like they're, they just really think they're smarter than us, right? Okay. And they were winning. And I'm sitting back there. And you could just hear them going, yeah, she's just a dumb blonde, you know, pretty, but so what? Uh, yeah. So, anyhow, we got to the last part of that. And there were, there's an audience at first question. And there are very smart people in the audience. And you just have to know which ones of them are smart. And you have to have your hand on the bell. And slowly but surely, in the last segment, this is back when it was an hour show, I managed to eke my way up to a winning position, which sort of really pissed off the guys. Phelan didn't mind because she was blonde, so we were like team members, so that was all right. <laughs> <laughs> was that, uh, was that uh, Dusen and Dirk? Were you on that? <laughs> was that, you? <laughs> that was a little... <laughs> thought you were going to win. I think it was Deucen that thought they were going to win. I think that was the, the one who was up for the win. <laughs> mm. What was your favorite question? I know everybody uh, comes away from uh, comes, comes away from first question with somewhat changed. What was, what was your favorite question? How do you feel being a winner? <laughs> <laughs> but you've been a winner always. <laughs> yeah. No, that was okay. good. So, um, uh, you also had a starring role in Step Up. Um, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I don't really – I hardly remember. That, w- that was really because of the uh, – remember when people used to steal other people's stuff? So, that was really uh, – I forget who produced that, but that was uh, uh, r- really uh, against people that were copy stuff. So, mm-hmm. I got – and I got to do a lot of things. I can't believe that all those things were like years and years ago. That was before I had wrinkles, you know, before my pixels started to sag. Oh, you know? my. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm just a young buck right now, so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to those days. Right. You first came in Second Life? Yeah. Who helped you get dressed? Did you have to <laughs> Um, as you can tell, I still need help. Yeah. Um, now, I, I've heard that you're working on a new show. You did? Yes. Yeah. And I've actually got one episode out, and I'm looking for somebody to film it, okay? Because we've had you know, the person who did film it, that it seems to be really busy, and I, or record it, or whatever you do. It's called Cooking with Lauren. And the first episode was How to Make a Lobster. And the second one, I want to do a chocolate mousse, but I think it's, it'd be a lot of fun uh, just to do a whole bunch of cooking shows from Second Life into First Life. And uh, wouldn't it be great if we could get one of the shows like on the Food Network? <laughs> <laughs> so now, I'm, now you're actually talking about how to how to prepare a lobster to uh, eat, um, as opposed you know, when you say how to make a lobster. I want to make sure of that one. Yes. Book a lobster, okay. make a lobster. Okay, no, that's it. That's it. I'm not going to tell anybody about. It. Okay, let's just stay with cooking lobsters. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Looking through, uh, looking through, there's some pretty amazing, uh, pretty amazing stuff that you've been getting. What was what for you right now? What was a crowning achievement? What was um, what was something that sticks out of your mind? Is like, wow, I'm just so glad I did that. Oh, I, I think there's so many pieces. I, I don't think I put one as a crown. I, I, I look back. Do you know, one of my philosophies is to say, well, we're like, I think it might even be in my profile. I don't know what's in my profile. Don't profile per me, please. I don't know what I put in there. I never know. I put things about people like you. You never know. And then I'm asked, did you put me as a pick? But this is what I say. Memories are better than dreams, so turn your dreams to memories. And so I have a lot of great memories so far from Second Life that were dreams when they started, but they're now memories. And I don't rank one better than the other one. They're just all absolutely terrific. And Well, not everyone's terrific, but a lot of them are terrific. You know? Absolutely. So pick, um, 
pick a how about a low moment because there can't be too many of those. You running Something out of that, me? <laughs> running out of what? Things to ask me. <laughs> no, I think no. I just I just hit high. Thought thought I'd go for low, and I don't mean low like you really like. No, not not low bad, but like just something nice and relaxed that you thought was wonderful that's happened in Second Life. I mean, what do you do? In, what do you do for chilling? Well, I love going shopping. My friends do mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's certain music that I like a lot too. Uh, and uh, uh, oh, is that did? Oh, look, Pookie just put that up. You still have that episode fifty-one. Wow! And uh, I like uh, oh. uh, there's there's some fabulous performers here in Second Life that I, I enjoy. Many of them perform over on Tuesdays, uh, like Tamara Hayden and Lizard. Oh my gosh, Lizard, yes. which is the Juliets. They're they're incredible. The two of them they get going, and then there's uh, of course there's Terry Lynn Melody and there's. Uh, I should try to think of everybody that comes over to perform there. But I also like the, the people that don't perform there to perform elsewhere, like Grace McDonough and mm-hmm. uh, Crap. Oh, and did you see her TED Talk? Yeah. Wasn't that something? That yeah. was awesome. And Crap has a Wednesdays. He calls it 100-word stories. If you haven't been to it, uh, I call it inventory sorting day. But... Uh, <laughs> No, actually, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I, I, I don't know how many hundreds of stories Crap's written, and he goes through them. And, and interestingly, for an hour, there's always a couple of them that you really like. You know, there's always a couple that you, thousands, exactly, actually, thousands and thousands. So I, I like doing that, and I get through my inventory. And, mm-hmm. and that's kind of fun, you know, when you pull out something that you bought, like a dress, and you put it on, and you realize it doesn't fit anymore, and you go, oh, my God. Gone. I just must be just over pixelating <laughs> at meals around here or something like that, right? And too I, many, too else, many bites, I guess. How many of you were when I got one of those new mesh dresses or whatever? Okay. First of all, as Haley says, if you're wearing that dress, okay, a lot of people see you wearing a rock. All right, that's what they say, a rock. But one of the problems with the mesh dresses are, and which, which has been brought up by Haley and others, is that. They don't have any movement. So what we have to do is we have to grab things from our prim outfits and stick them on with the mesh outfits. And that's kind of fun. We, you know, I don't just press a button and wear clothes. I've got to, you know, look through and sort and do everything. So that's fun. So, uh, so that's something I like to do. I also used to love, and I, this, this sort of disappeared uh, after, I don't know how many of you remember, Bettina. Uh, but I'm actually going to see Bettina next week in First Life. But Bettina used to do, uh, 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 shoot, I can't even remember the name all of a sudden. Who knows the name out there? What was it called? You're all members of it, so you better remember the name. But uh, not possible in real life. Very good, crap. Thank you. Uh, and we used to go around to Sims. Do you remember, Dirk? Did you used to go around and look at the incredible builds that people were doing? Oh, I've I've looked at some. I was wondering. Um, I, I had heard that you've done something with landscaping uh, around your place. Landscaping around my place? I you don't, don't get into landscaping. No, no, no. You see, when I didn't have many talents, so mm. I, I learned how to make watercress sandwiches. That's what I learned how Ooh, to do. Okay, all right. It's it's a lot to builders so build for me. I can get people to do things for me. You know, like mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I've I've seen I've seen some lovely builds around. I mean, uh, I still um, I was in awe of like, for instance, the lost what do they call it, the Lost Gardens of Apollo, or yeah. some of the older builds. Yeah. And you know, that's something that that would be great if we could somehow. And and it's it's sad because. You would think Linden Labs would have treasured some of these things to have made some sort of a deal to have saved them and, and have them rolling through a few sims. Like they could have saved hundreds of them and had like three or four sims and every week those sims would play something that was of greatness of the past. They could have gotten the, the creators to have given them rights to those things. It would have been incredible. Historic landmarks. Exactly, Pookie. I mean, there was no reason not to. It could, you know... There, there were people from the very beginning all the way through, we, those who had to work with Prims uh, and then those who moved on. There, there was Star Rex, you know, um, you know, from the very start. Yeah. 
Oh, I, I remember hearing, um, I, I don't know if you know, um, Ran and Chutnor has uh, got a hold of some church that was like an early made cathedral um, that it's actually started to have prim creep, so it looks like it's uh, falling apart a little bit. Um, that the, really? um, I, Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of strange that the prims are starting to relocate themselves. Um, and then, um, what was it? There was... Um, um, Ina Centaur um, with mm-hmm. uh, doing some things with the uh, Shakespeare Theater and uh, the uh, uh, the Primtings, uh, a uh, big art gallery. Uh, a lot of places that uh, were just really beautiful and, and some really amazing builds. Uh, what what other builds can you remember? Well, the original Hobo was built, and I'll let somebody type in her name right here. If anybody, we, I always like to see if they can remember the people's names. There was also the Louvre. I don't know how many people visited the Louvre that used to be in here. Uh, that was in Greenies was phenomenal, Pookie. You're absolutely right. We should go through these. Greenies was phenomenal. Arcadia Asylum, exactly, Gina. Yeah, and 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 yep, yeah. Remember the the Louvre, and 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 then. There, there was, uh, uh, there was the what is it the 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 cathedral of whatever uh, it, it's the that's the big cathedral in in France, the Garden of Delight. Yeah, and then Carnival of Doom. Look at this. This is great. People are remembering them right here. If you're looking right at the show, and for those of you who've never seen this, who are watching, and if you'd seen these things, you would have been amazed. Van Gogh, another phenomenal piece of work. And, and each of these things we'd go to, and we'd go, "Wow, Starry Night!" Exactly, Doctor Fran. Hey, yeah, and 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 people would spend immense amounts of time and effort making something that we, all of us, in Second Life, we would tell each other we'd go visit these places, and we were awestruck, awestruck by the talent and 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 the creativity uh, that that was expressed. And now when they're gone, they're gone. And they're memories to us, but they should have been saved and, and shown. But then again, unfortunately, you know, well, well, fortunately, Linden Labs was smart enough to create Second Life. Unfortunately, they weren't smart enough to realize what was great about it and how to maintain it. So we have yeah. to maintain it now. And so uh, that's what we do. We're the ones who continue it. Absolutely. And, uh, and there's definitely some beautiful stuff out there. Well, just thinking about that, thinking about where we've been, um, where we are, uh, if you had a crystal ball, where do, you think, where do you think we're going? What do you think the impacts of virtual worlds will be, say, five, ten years from now? Well, I, I am convinced, and it's, it's interesting, I was thinking about this. You know, you saw the other day that uh, Facebook bought Instagram because of the social media, okay? And I think social media that we know outside of Second Life, is, even though it's bigger than a Second Life, is actually like Microsoft's, uh, uh, what was it, the, the Vista, waiting for Apple iPhone to come along. And I think we're going to see at some point the virtual world like this, and it may not be Second Life. It may be a totally new. Obviously, it wasn't Blue Mars. You remember that was they were going to take mm. over everything. Blue Mars turned into brown, whatever. But uh, <laughs> but I I really believe that this is not going away. We're a forefront of a world that one day will be much larger, almost like when television first came out. And they made radio better, and people thought, oh, well, television won't happen. This will be, and I, I think we will, we will actually live more in a virtual world than, than we imagine. And we will create and do many things here that will then benefit first life as well. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, talking about that, I can't tell you how many times in Second Life I've gone shopping and seen clothing in Second Life only to see it on the runway in First Life in Paris or something a year or two later. I mean, really? Yeah. I've seen stuff that, uh, that, that Eshi's created. Later on, you see it somewhere in, 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 in some First Life. They make a big deal about it on the New York Times or something. Absolutely. 
So I don't think this is going away because I think some of the most creative people and, and the friendships here wouldn't have been able to happen without Second Life, whereas the friendships on Facebook generally happen because you already know these people. You don't really, you're expanding just a limited part of yourself where Second Life expands you beyond yourself. Mm-hmm. So going on with that, um, what are some of the changes that you've experienced since coming into Second Life? Well, <clears throat> It gets tiring walking in heels. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can I can see that, but it, it does wonders for your calves. They look beautiful. <laughs> oh, actually, I'll tell you uh, that it, it, it's given me a, a very good perspective on a lot of things that I wouldn't have had a perspective on. Uh, there are plenty of things that are very feminine that are r- really wonderful. There's uh, a respect for create individual creativity that you will not get to see in first life because they don't have the money to break out and, and be seen. But in second life, they can create things and show that they're spectacular. Just like looking around us, even in this, uh, even in this auditorium, yeah, in the rotunda. Yeah, just look and and not here. How about? Um, uh, and she's doing a big show in 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 First Life, Gracie Kendall's work with a with a thousand mm-hmm. stars, all right? I mean, Absolutely. I mean, we all we all remember her, her work, and and she's actually doing uh, something uh, coming up right now. And then there's Bryn O. How about her work in, in in Second Life? How many people remember Bryn O's work? I mean, phenomenal. Uh, uh, I mean, and and just so you know, I'm going to put a pitch for my dear friend Chantel again, because there's the 48-hour film uh, 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 machinima project. I'm going to put it in here for those who don't know, but this is coming up this weekend, and there are people in this room that have actually submitted work to it, and machinima is unique. It's another thing that really, you know, unplugged itself even more because of Second Life. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, there's Robustus, who has done this, and, uh, and, and, you know, Phelan, who's been, how long has Phelan been doing this show? Like, forever. For those of you who wonder why Phelan's not talking right now, it's uh, because he was practicing to be in a circus, swallowing a sword and fire at the same time last night, so he can't speak. And this Bevan, who has constantly been a part of everything in Second Life, without her, uh, most of us would have missed much, including you. You asked about this, but you know, if Bevan says, "Oh, there's a party or something to go to, no matter what it is," you want to be one that gets invited to it because it's the best of the best. You want to be on her list if you can. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, and uh, you had mentioned Zemu, or, or he seems uh, to have shown himself now. Uh, Z- did you, uh, Zemo's here. Oh, fabulous. Z, I was just talking about all the stuff you did. I was chatting about, and it was Callie Dell that actually introduced me to Zemo. But, uh, but I was talking about when you did the production in Amsterdam, yeah, which was phenomenal. And you know who else? I mean, you go on, there's Widget uh, Whiteberry. She does her show. I mean, there, there's so many people that, that they may be here, they may not be here. Oh, Pearly. Hello, Pearly. I see you're here and looking in the back. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me, what? What happened? <laughs> but I, I, don't, I wonder if she's excusing herself from smiling. For so when you're around, you're looking at all creative people. Absolutely. And, and everybody's supporting each other in different ways. This Leslie Ryder, too, who has uh, I would like to make sure I don't forget anybody. I'm sure I'll forget somebody, but that's not because of anything other than limitation. But uh, it, 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 I... I Think about it. In first life, in your everyday first life, versus your compressed time in second life, how much creativity are you? Which which one are you getting more roundabout creativity in? Especially if if you don't have big money, you know. In, in first life now, I don't even know. This stuff costs a lot of money to go to a show or production or whatever. 
Mm-hmm. Okay? And and if you think about stripping away the 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 real life veil, you know, what do we do in our regular lives, and then we walk into second life and become singers, painters, comedians, artists. Mm-hmm. I think uh, that uh, one thing Philip Lyndon was right about was that Second Life would would expose you to uh, uh, some part of you that really existed that you didn't get to express in First Life. And, uh, you know, and you take a look. I mean, I, I didn't mention Slim who's here, Slim Warriors here, but she's involved in so many different pieces of Second Life. I mean, I just, I just blown away when I look around a room. It's completely blown away. Absolutely. And I'm just glad none of you decided to do comedy. I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to pull you back to a uh, another bigger picture question here for a sec. Um, uh, a question that's been given to me. Um, Facebook is bigger than the whole Internet right now, which interesting way to look at it. Do you think an integration would be a good idea? Um like with some shops with Facebook URLs on the entrance, etc. Um, I think that know, was you, a mistake that that uh, Linden Labs made even way back when. They should have incorporated this right into First Life, even with when they first had corporate ab- in a year, tied it into advertising. But yeah, if they don't, they need to tie it in where you can in in. I, mean, I don't know what they can do, but it should be able to just open right there in Facebook and and operate. But then again, that's an issue because how many people got thrown out of Facebook because you were Second Life people? You know, they 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 don't or recognize G plus or whatever. Yeah, they don't recognize uh, 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 virtual avatars. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, so you ha- you have to be somebody that they can directly market to and get your money, or they don't want you there. I guess. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because what we do here is is not going away. Even if there's a lull and changes, no matter what happens, you know, uh, the, there are too many people like us that are our replacements, you know, the little ones, that they will recreate this even better and bigger and more important. Mm-hmm. Well, have you, um, how have you felt the, uh, the other platforms um, growing? I mean, do you think... Uh, Lively. Why was that something? And, and Google Lively. Do you all remember Google Lively? It was going to supplant everything. Yeah. There's many Google things that were supposed to supplant everything. No, nothing's really replaced this. They're just We're adding things along the way that are getting too hard to keep up with them all. I mean, you know, there's Twitter and Facebook, and there was Plurk, and Plurk came and might have gone. MySpace turned into whatever it is. But... Uh, yeah, the, by, the, by the way, there's a there's a group of us that uh, quietly maintain Plurk as one of the wonderful places to be. You do. I have a Plurk account that I've managed to put into hibernation. <laughs> <laughs> I got tired when people were Plurking. I'm about to make coffee. I'm about to sip it. I think I'll have a, just a little bit of it now. Maybe I'll take my pills. Maybe I won't take my pills. Are you listening? Are you there? I'm not sure if you're there. If you're not there, I'd like to know if you're not there. I have a fucking timeline. Oops, I'm not allowed to say that, am I? Excuse me. There'd be a timeline. I didn't say that, Bevan, just so you know, okay? I didn't say (laughs) So. (laughs) And Haley Plurks every year, okay? Yeah. Yeah, his Plurk is Twitter on crack, exactly. Yeah, you don't have to tell us who it is, but have you ever tried to have him? Uh, all right, that's that's a good question, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you, and I'll tell everybody, I, I only once made an alt, all right? It was somewhere around 2009, around Thanksgiving. If you remember, everybody was partnering in Second Life. Do you remember that? Like? Uh, all of you were partnering and, and then you wouldn't talk and, and when you partner and, and stuff, you know, I have good friends like Tara Lynn, when she partners, you can't talk to her for the first three weeks of partnership. Fortunately, she's had the same partner long enough that now I can talk to her. So, uh, <laughs> but, but back then, everybody was partnering. Even you, Ashley, you were partnered too, remember? Yeah, it looks at crap. I was getting lonely and it was around that time so I said I, I needed a, a partner so I created an avatar I'll tell you who it is but first I'll tell you this I managed to create him I got him to uh, uh, one of those 
what do you call them? Think those spots where you you go and hang out, like not a sandbox, but whatever. And uh, I did get him a nice pair of jeans, a hub. Thank you. And I got him a uh, good hairdo. He has no shirt on. So, and I left him with 500 lindens in a hub. His name is J.W. Clip, C-L-I-P. And by now, he probably has kids and married, and God only knows what I've seen. I don't know, how, I don't know the password. I don't know how to find him. I don't know where he is. But if you look him up, I probably they have not uh, bothered to, uh, uh, you know, clear him out yet. J.W. Clip, does he still exist? Is he still out there? <laughs> you know. I think he's probably a slut by now, but I don't know. Yeah, loving him, love him, and leave him. Huh? That, that that was that was my moment. Lasted all of one day, and then I said, "Nope, I'm only a, I can only be one avatar, Lauren." There you go. And you, what a wonderful Lauren you've been and will continue to be. I think we're coming about to the end of our time. Are there uh, is there anything that you're just dying to tell us? Yeah, I just want to tell everybody this in this room and anybody watching out there, I really thank you. This is really makes me feel wonderful that I'm appreciated. And uh, it makes my heart feel wonderful. You guys have all given me a lot of love, uh, which is, gets me through every day. And just so you know, everybody in this room and elsewhere, when the day comes that I'm no longer in first life, my lawyer is going to find all of you and make you all come to the funeral and scare the crap out of the people that were hanging out in First Life thinking they knew me. <laughs> <laughs> that will be a pleasure. And Lauren, it has been a wonderful pleasure. It's all the time we have today for the broadcast, and I'd like to invite you to stay for an after-show wrap-up. It's been wonderful having you here on the show and looking forward to the good things to come. That's it from the Rockliffe Rotunda. Inside the Avatar Studio is produced by Bevan Whitfield and Rockliffe University Consortium. Technical production by Robustus Hacks and Mel Burns in association with Metaverse TV. For more information on Inside the Avatar Studio, check out our website at avatarstudio.info, no other punctuation, or subscribe to our Twitter or Facebook fan page at urockliffe, U-R-O-C-K-C-L-I-F-F-E. It's been wonderful having you here.